Hey everybody, Josh for Populi here, and students deserve a little credit, and that's especially true when you owe them money. This video will be most useful for the financial admin and student billing roles. Quick note, settings control whether or not student billing users can refund credit balances. So different institutions might allow or prevent the student billing role from executing this type of transaction. The financial aid role cannot actually execute the refund, but they're often involved in related processes, so it might be helpful for them to know some of the deets. That's short for details. It should not be a surprise that different settings or institutional setups may run into different options. The knowledge base article linked down in the description may help with some of those. We're gonna go through the most basic version of the process, and then we'll talk about some related details. Or DEETS, on a student's profile, under financial, under the dashboard view, you'll choose to select refund credit balance. If you're not seeing this on a student profile, it's because there's not a refundable amount on the student's account. The student has to have a payment or some kind of credit not applied against an invoice for this option to show up. Once you click that text, you can enter the posted date. Populi automatically supplies the current date there and assuming that you're actually executing the refund as you're recording it here in Populi, that's most likely the date you'd use. But if you need to adjust the date before you record the transaction, you've got the option. Then you'll have the option to select the refund source. The detail of your options here will depend on those other settings I mentioned. Again, you can check out the article in the description. What you see here comes down to the nature of the payment or credit. Currently, we see 200 refundable dollars for payments and credits. But if we change the refund source here, we may see different amounts under different categories on this dropdown. For instance, the payment that we're trying to refund is a Pell Grant, which is federal aid. So if I set this to federal aid, it shows an amount. If I set it to non-federal aid, we don't get an amount. None of the unapplied payments here have non-federal aid as their source. But if I set it to Pell, we get an amount there as well. You can see that the amount is the same between federal aid and Pell, because in this case, that refers to the same payment. So you could record this refund at the level of federal aid or as a Pell grant. In the blank above that, you'll enter the amount that you're refunding. Obviously, you can't refund more than what is shown in the max amount below this field. Who will this be paid to? Typically, this would go out to the student, profile owner, but you can choose. For payment method, you have various options. Almost all of them are ways for you to indicate the kind of transaction you're recording. So you can record a check or a credit card payment, et cetera. The one that's different is the print check option, which allows you to generate a check that you can print from a layout. Select the method that you wanna use and then enter an optional reference number below that. Then you can select the asset account you want this payment to affect. You're choosing where you'd like to record the credit side of that transaction. Often schools will have an aid liability account or even different accounts for specific aid types. You might have a designated Pell account that you could choose there. Obviously, it depends on how you've got things set up. Once you've made all your selections here, you'll click save to finish recording the refund. If you select other person or organization, you'll get a field in which you can search for the person to whom the refund should be issued. You'll begin typing a name and then choosing the correct option from the results. Doing that will give you the count as aid field there and that's a 1098T related field. Box five on a 1098T is a total of the aid that a student's received. In situations where you're refunding aid, if it doesn't go back to the student, then it shouldn't be included in the calculation for box five on their 1098T. 
For example, you might run into a situation like this if you're dealing with a PLUS loan that's in a parent's name. That setting pops in and lets you control that. When you print in Populi, what you're doing is generating a PDF that you'll download to your computer, and then you open that file in another application, a PDF viewer, and print from there. On the Refund Credit Balance dialog, when you choose the Print Check option, you'll click Save, and then you'll get another dialog. You can select the template that you've created for those checks, and then you can select Print. Different browsers may handle that PDF in different ways, but you just need to be able to open and print it from some application. If you ever need to get back to that check and print it again, you can do that by going to the profile, onto Financial, then the Dashboard, locating the reference for that refund, clicking that, going to the check number, and clicking there. Doing that gives you that same dialog. Quick note here on what to do if you think you should have that refund credit balance option there and you're not seeing it. It could be that somehow that payment or credit is applied when it shouldn't be. Maybe Gregory on your student billing team got a wild hair and misapplied it, who knows? On a profile, financial, dashboard, you'll see recent transactions. You can locate the misapplied or partially misapplied payment there. Or if it's not so recent, over on the financial history tab. Once you find the payment, you'll see that over here on the right, you've got a list of invoices to which this payment has been applied. And then above that, you'll see the unapplied payment option. The payment may be applied to one or more invoices. If the payment's applied to more than one invoice, and perhaps it should be applied to one of those invoices but not another one, you can unselect any invoices to which the money should stay applied. So to put that in corollary terms, any payments that you want to refund that shouldn't be applied, those should remain checked. Once you've made your selection, you can save and Bingo, that payment is unapplied. And if you go back to the financial dashboard, you'll see it sitting there under unapplied payments. And at the top, you'll have the refund credit balance option. I wanted to point out that you can do bulk refunds in Populi. So if you're processing a number of refunds, you don't have to go student by student one at a time. We have instructions on that in the Knowledge Base article about refunding credit balances. I've already mentioned it a couple times and gee whiz, it's linked down in the description. Also, if you want to explore more training options, you should be aware of our focus sessions. These are one hour long training sessions that take place over Zoom. You and several other Populi users meet up with a Populi support rep you get a little training and then get to ask some questions. We have a rotating sequence of topics. So if you miss a session on something like admissions or billing, don't worry, it'll be rolling back around. You can get to the focus sessions by going to the knowledge base, clicking on release notes and announcements, and then clicking into focus sessions. We've also popped the link directly to the focus sessions down in the description. I've been Josh for Populi. You've been great. Thanks for watching.